showing you how I make my lace frontal wigs um, this isn't like how I think you know like everybody should do it. I'm just showing you how I do my wigs um, so this is the unit that I made um, and in this video I'm not going to be showing you how to do the hairline but this is strictly just how I construct my wigs So what you're going to need is some cotton thread, a curved needle, you're going to need obviously your hair. I use the mesh dome caps, um, you know, opposed to the spandex, it's more breathable that way. So first what I'm just going to do is I'm going to lay my frontal down and you see I'm pulling it maybe about an inch above where the band is and then I'm going to pin it down there. And then all I'm doing here is I'm moving the hair out the way I'm pinning it so that I can sew and see where I'm sewing at. What you want to do is you want to make sure that it lays flat across the top. You don't want to pull it back to where it's lumpy. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing. So I use the loop and pull method. Um, that's just basically where you you loop when you sew you pull the needle through that loop and then you just pull it you know straight through um, you can't really see what I'm doing because you know the thread is so long but um, yes that's the method the method that I'm doing and I start I always start in the middle and work my way out to each side this just ensures that it lays completely flat you don't want there to be any lumps in the back of your frontal. It won't lay right and it won't be a flat install. So you want to make sure that you sew closely together and that, you know, the gaps are not big at all. So you just want to make sure that everything is nice and flush. finishing up and to secure it all I do is I pull the needle back through where I made that stitch and then I cut it off and then tie a knot and then I just cut off the excess thread so then here you see what one side looks like and so that's what it's looking like there and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side so then here I'm just starting to sew my wefts down so Typically in the back, I always double my wefts and I always use the fold over method. That way I can ensure that the hair does not, you know, I just want to minimize the shedding. So I'll go ahead and fold over at the back and then once I get closer to the front, you know, I cut my wefts, you know, just so that it can lay as flat as possible. So here you don't have to make the stitching as close together as you did with the frontal. Um, it doesn't really matter that much, but you don't want it too far apart where it starts to bunch up in the back. So you want to make sure, you know, that you're keeping that in mind. So when I'm sewing through the back, you want to make sure that you're not going through the elastic band. 
that you're only going through the mesh and you'll be able to see when you're you know when you get up close to it that you're not sewing through the band because that way it won't stretch and there won't be any movement in the wig you won't be able to stretch it out so here I just fold it over the weft what I do is I always go through the weft whenever I'm starting a track or if I'm folding over I always sew through the weft at first um, that just gives it more security and it makes you know that fold a lot more flat so that it's not a big bulk right there where you flipped it over so then I'm just continuing on sewing that and then starting I'm going to thread my needle again so like I said whenever I start a new like I start a new track or I flip it over or if I run out of thread I always go through the weft that just it you know it just adds a lot more security to your threading and that the threading won't unravel And also, if you need to slow the video down, you can do that. Just change that in the settings of the video if you want to um, see in detail what I'm doing or if you have to slow it down for yourself because I know some people are visual learners. So you can always go ahead and change that setting in the video if this is too fast for you. I'm coming up on the last of this first bundle um, for this install I used a total of three and like a quarter of the bundles that I have um, so here you see me just securing it so like I said through the webs and then not that off and then just cut off the excess with this hair, I wanted this to be really full. Um, and as you can see, with just one bundle, it's very thick. Now, I wanted to show you guys this. With this hair, it looks like it's like two different colors. Now, I wanted to dye this hair jet black. Um, but as you can see, like some of the bundles were like already like really black. And then some were like that natural brown color that bundles typically come in. Um, so I found that to be a little bit weird, but all that's going to change when I color it. So here I am, I think this is the third bundle. So you're going to just continue to sew in that U shape. Now, as you can see, I've already started to single my wefts, um, like just doing one weft at a time. Um, 
and then here is kind of where I start cutting my tracks because once you get like up here it'll start to really get bulky if you continue to fold over because your frontal has to lay once you move the hair of the frontal so you want it to lay as flat as possible so that's why I'm just going ahead and cutting those webs so if you want to secure like the shedding you don't want as much shedding you can always get a weft sealer or you know something like that from Walmart and then that'll work too and put that you know right on the wefts So now I'm getting to like the middle part of the front of the unit. So this is kind of where, oh, that random blue piece. And this hair is like a lot of different fibers and like fillers in the hair, but no biggie, I wasn't that pressed. So you see, I'm starting to kind of go straight across. That's because my last track, I'm going to connect it with the frontal if that makes sense so it's just gonna go straight across um, I feel like doing that makes it look a lot better like it's less lumps that way because you have that one track that's going flush with the frontal so that's why I started to go straight across here just so that the flow and the movement of the unit would go together finished off that last track this is the only part of the fourth bundle that I actually used so you can see where I'm just lining it up right with the edge of the frontal and I'm stitching it literally in the back of the frontal so that it kind of will just lay together um, and you can see how it just kind of cover up how it just kind of covers up those bumps from like when you folded the wefts over in the back. So I'm literally doing that across the entire perimeter of the frontal.
secure that. So this is what it's looking like here. So you should always have that little bunch in your frontal. That just lets you know that it laid the right way. Um, but this is what it looks like once it's done. Um, so then what you want to do is you want to cut off that extra cap. I mean, obviously we're not going to need that once we put it on because we don't have a black scalp. So it's not going to look natural at all. So, but this is just what it is looking like before any customizations are done to it. So yeah, this is how I constructed the wig. Now I am in no way a professional. I'm not a hairstylist, but this is just how I do my wigs and what works for me. Um, I know this isn't a hair channel, but I just wanted to come and show you guys how I do, how I do my wigs. So if you wanna see how I customize it and how I dye it, um, depending on the feedback from this video, I might post that one. But yeah, so this is how the wig came out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the high move. Throw that to the side.